Hi guys, weird intro today. I'm in the warehouse because we have something pretty exciting coming soon. <sighs> Let's paint some inch wings. No cuts, in one go, gonna be amazing. Let's jump in, more on that stuff, barely soon. So, you've got a gorgeous Games Workshop paint job in front of you. You're looking at these blends done beautifully by hand over hours and highlights. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one of these in about 15 minutes, hopefully. So, strap in. This is way easier than you'd think, and it's an amazing technique. So, here's the thing that I've put one layer of blue on earlier. Of course, we're gonna be doing the start of this with some stippling, the Series D. If you have a airbrush and you wanna use that, that's absolutely fine. It's what's coming after we've put this base coat down that's important. So if you want to airbrush it or layer it, rock on. I'm going to stipple it though, that's what I prefer. Okay, so got our Cantor blue down. You can use any blue here, just don't use McCrag. It's far too matte. Okay, now very, very simple. Uh, we've got a white spray here. Um, if you're spraying two wings, spray them both together and try and match how you spray them. Same with balancing this stuff out to make sure both sides match and look visually cohesive. And then between our colors, we're gonna do a 50-50 stipple. And at no point here, do you really need to worry about things being perfect at all. It's not really what matters. And uh, why it doesn't matter will become fairly soon, apparently. But yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. It doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever. So after the 50-50 mix, or something that looks 50-50. Do hold in mind some paints are stronger than the other. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, it's something that looks halfway between the two colors. Gonna do a pure one. Scream of pink here. Wonderful color. Now, may look a bit unsubtle. Keep going with it. Take it down a little further and then dry brush a little bit up onto the previous steps. Emperor's Children next. So we've already got some Scream of Pink in the brush. Work it in. Then put it slightly below the layer that you're on. You're not transitioning into it yet until you've got a fair bit of it off the brush. So now at this stage, can do a little bit of dry brushing to help one blend into the other. Very important, I'm only gonna take the step that I'm on dry brushing over the previous step, no further than that. So clean the brush again. Going through more pure mix now. We still do have some of the previous colors in the brush and we're working quite fast. So it's not gonna be pure, but this is closer to pure. Again, put it down. Now we want a good base coat out of this. This is the weakest color we've got in our repertoire here. So make sure that you get it absolutely everywhere. We're gonna be doing some washing, so if you do miss somewhere, it's not the end of the world, but do try and cover absolutely every bit. This is the weaker color, by the way, if people are interested, because the colors after it actually have quite a lot of powerful white in there, which allows them to cover. And the ones before have got some darker hints in them that have got good coverage as well, so it's actually the color in the middle that suffers a little bit. There we go. Tip it down, work it backwards a little bit. And remove some and work it into the brush at the same time. And dry brush it a little bit over the previous step. We're working super quick here. Okay, still got a bit in the brush. Take a bit of my slightly lumpy fulgrim pink. Work that in, take some of the Empress Children. Work it into the brush and remove some off the bristles. Take it over the previous step up a little bit, but not all the way. 
And now we're going to give the brush a uh, pretty decent clean. Go for it pure. We're getting there. Screaming skull. Bit more screaming skull than that. The uh, the foreground pink is surprisingly strong. There we go. That's better. Again, work it into the bristles. Work it off a bit. Using my damping pad, softening it up a little, removing it. We're gently going to buff this dry brush. We're not going to take it too far. Now we're going to go for pretty much pure Screaming Skull. See, I'm keeping my hand behind it. It gives me a really steady point. And no one's worried about getting painty fingers. Not if we can get a quick, good quality paint job in time. And I mean, you could leave it there. We're not going to, but you could. What I'm going to do is take my dry brushing back now and I'm trying to hit the bottom of the feathers. So very, very lightly, all these cute little edges are going to get caught. And I'm going to jump back uh, a few steps to our previous colors. So here I'm using the uh, the foreground pink that can highlight up to Emperor's Children, maybe a tiny bit beyond, but not more. Keeping it careful. And also we can hit these feathers from the side. So take your time. We're going pretty fast. Back into the Emperor's Children which can highlight the scream of pink and then into the scream of pink. We can actually use to take up to the blue. We have these feathers here. What do we highlight this blue with? Well, we're actually going to have to uh, draft in a quick substitution. So for the first time, because we need something for this section, we're using the Teclis blue. These colors, by the way, I'm not clever enough to work them out myself. I followed a <laughs> painting tutorial from Pete the Wargamer. His lot of change looked really nice, so I've taken it and adapted it for speedy dry brushing. Now, with the colors that we've got in our brush, this could should kind of go a little bit weird and pastel-y, but it should be quite a soft version of the blue. So we've got kind of violet on the go. And then we can take a bit more of the blue. Get some of the pics out of that. Now, this is already looking pretty good already. You know, especially considering the amount of time that we've spent, that's a very, very solid result. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna level it up a little bit as fast as possible with as little effort as possible. So a bit more water in the dampening pad. We're gonna clean our brush off. Painting up my very own My Little Pony texture palette currently. Never had this much pink on it before. Okay, so we're pretty clean now. What I'm going to do is quickly grab some more Screaming Skull. We're going to draft in another sub. You can use any clean white for this. Don't use a cold one, like with a hint of blue in it or anything, because we've gone a bit warmer with a Screaming Skull. So I just use a neutral one. Working it into the brush, carefully removing it. And then we're really softly going to pay some attention to the end of these feathers. As you have uh, less and less on the brush and less and less is coming off, 
you can proceed with less caution, but always start being as careful as possible before you go gung-ho and jump in. It's already looking pretty good, isn't it? Bit more white, bit more screaming skull. There we go. So, I mean, that looks great. You could absolutely leave it there. Got one more trick up the sleeve though. I'm gonna do some very, very quick washes and they'll do a wonderful job of finishing it off. So, first things first, we're gonna be using a very decent amount of contrast medium here. Use a big brush, I'm using a three, but I'd genuinely, I'd recommend using a four, possibly even a five. Part of this is about working quick. And then we've got two all-stars here. We've got crop score scales. If you want something that pulls to the recesses a bit more, you could absolutely go for pterodon turquoise. It doesn't filter quite so much over the raised areas. They're both fine though. Pick whichever one you prefer. We definitely won't be needing any more than that. It's quite strong. That should be enough caraway crimson. First steps first. I'm actually going to give this a light dusting, like a really light dusting. Just to pull any fluffy bits out of the recesses. Very, very soft mix. Here, we might even need some more uh, contrast medium, but we'll, we'll get our way to that. We've gone incredibly fast so far, so... Now we're going to slow down a bit, and this is going to give us some amazing additional steps of shading. Now I say we're slowing down a bit, you're still going to use kind of wet blending here in a slightly cheaty way. So don't go too slow, but you shouldn't really have any issues with the with stuff drying out unless you're going extremely slowly. And it's quite hard to go slow when using a big brush. So you catch absolutely everywhere. The main thing that you're wanting to not do is not to allow excess pooling. So what I like to do is I put it at the top of a section and then rather than going back to the palette, I pull from the section that I started on until I can't get enough stuff on the brush. We're not doing a glaze, we are doing a wash here. So it should still pull in the recesses and give us a little bit of extra depth and detail to them. Okay, we've got the soft one down, put in a bit more. Then what we're gonna do is below our previous ones, working quick, starting from the same side, we're gonna travel further up the feathers. Oops, a bit too strong there. We want it weaker at the ends. Stronger again. And a great big dollop. Pretty strong hair. These little Vs between the feathers are prime over pooling areas. So I'm actually just gonna use them like a bit of a palette, like I was saying before, in order to make sure that we don't end up anywhere area getting a you know a bit too saturated. That pooling won't look good once things are dried. It stands out quite a lot. So this is why we take a bit more time with this step. Contrast medium. Gonna mix up a soft mix of our blue and then we're gonna mix that together. So we've got a soft hybrid between our two colors. Now this one, because of the mix, it's actually harder to detect, uh, to see it visually. So do be extra careful not to let this one pull too far. So I've started and I'm not gonna go back to my palette now I'll take that and I'll take it as far as I can until the final step. I'm gonna take a bit more contrast medium. If you don't contrast medium, dilute this, you'll end up completely tinting the feathers, which looks quite cool. It's a nice color, but that's not what we're going for. However, we've just got the pure blue. Mix maybe a hint of the purple in there. So 
There you go, give it a quick check. I've missed this section here. Just gonna pull that. And I think that's it. All right, hopefully that shows up on camera as uh, tasty as it is in real life. Really is an incredible effect given the time that we've spent. Just gonna whisk around now while it's still wet in anywhere that I feel is, uh, is too heavily done in that midsection. Oh mop up anywhere here it's too late now started drying so this is why uh this is why you take care that's it looking great you could repeat the dry brushing step again over this if you wanted not a bad option whatsoever this one has it on so if you wanted to make it brighter you can do that up to you personal taste but uh there you go that is a uh, a one cut take on super colorful transition blends at a high quality and it was super easy All right, so that's it. Really, really simple principles that you just apply. You can change the colors as easily as you like. So uh, yeah, please do go and check out our Kickstarter. I have a blank space behind me here. I'm gonna be putting my cabinets up soon. I have only just got my set. I am super, super excited for that. Hopefully this is one of the last intros or outros you will see without having sexy cabinets behind me. They are absolutely incredible. We've been working on them for a couple of years. Um, if you'd like to see any videos, you know, detailing Q&As about them, or if you have any questions about them, then by all means, please ask. Also, if you would like to see a series on everything you would need to produce a lot of change, uh, please let me know, because we've got some others in the works. And it's actually a very, very good model for learning. I think people think it's more intimidating than it is. You can do an incredible job pretty quickly, and it's all quite fun and forgiving. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. Check out the Kickstarter pre-link below and we will see you very soon. Kickstarter goes live next Monday.